Hi, I'm Millie Liang, ex corporate girl turned seven figure entrepreneur. But it wasn't all that long ago that I lacked the self confidence, money, time, and know how to start and build my own business. Fast forward past many failed attempts, lessons learned, tears, and hard work, I have built a business that creates both impact and profits. I created Shine to Impact podcast to give you inspirations and simple actionable strategies to help you bring out your gifts and some of genius so that you can start building a deeply satisfying business, impact the world, and make soulful, abundant money that supports your lifestyle and your spirit. So, if you're someone who's driven and big hearted and want to create a business and life that you truly love, you are at the right place. There is a diamond within you, and it's time to let it shine and impact the world. I have a free gift for you on my website Passion to Profit Playbook The Secrets of Turning Your Passion into an Impactful and Profitable Business. And that is available on my website, mililiang.com. That is M I L L I E L E U N G.com. Be sure to grab your copy today. Hello, I'm your host, Millie Liang, seven figure entrepreneur, best selling author of the book Mind and Money Makeover, recipient of the Best Personal Brand Award by Marketing Institute of Singapore, Global Goodwill Ambassador of GGA, and the creator of the Shine to Impact podcast. So today I want to share with you on how to conquer your fear and do it afraid. Now, do you have any fears? I certainly have many fears, and one of the fears that I have is with the water. The funny thing is, I can swim. At a young age, my parents made sure that my brother and I learned how to swim properly. They considered swimming an essential life saving skill, so at a young age, I have learned how to swim. However, I'm really afraid when it comes to activities that require me to put my head under the water for more than a few seconds. Activities like snorkeling, scuba diving, and sea walking really freak me out. Is that weird? I mean, do you have those fears too? For many, many years, although I love traveling, I would avoid these kind of underwater activities. A few years ago, my friends and I went to Phuket, Thailand for a short vacation. Now, I love Thailand. I found the country to be so interesting, fun, and exotic. I love Thai food and I love the rich flavors. And oh, yes, Thai iced tea is one of my favorite drinks. I also love checking out the night markets and I love, 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 love the spa and massages too. I'm definitely a spa person and I'm the kind of person who would actually go on spas six times in a four day trip. Yes, craziness here. Anyway, so on this particular trip to Thailand, one thing led to another. My friend suggested to do sea walking. Now, if you haven't heard about sea walking, it is an activity that you can literally walk under the sea. You wear this huge, heavy, oxygen filled helmet that allows you to walk on the bottom of the sea to see the coral reefs and fishes under the water. And there are tubes that connect your helmet to oxygen tanks from the boat. When my friends suggested this idea, they were so excited and they were going to book the sea walking tour right away. I quickly googled sea walking online and I've got to say, the photos of sea walking look really, really cool. I wanted to do it since I was already there in Phuket, but inside I was so afraid and my heart was pounding fast. And guess what? All 14 of my friends who were on this trip wanted to do it. So, under this enormous peer pressure, I couldn't have not do it right. I have to save myself some face and act brave. So there I was, scared out of my mind and reluctantly signed up for the sea walking experience. Later on that day, we were picked up by a tour guide from the hotel and we are on our way to the sea. Everyone looked so excited and happy on the ride. Well, except for me. I was getting butterfly in my stomach. You know that feeling you want to throw up? Yeah, it was me. Shortly after, we arrived at the beach and brought the boat. Before long, we arrived at the sea walking spot in the middle of the sea. The tour guide went over the instructions and safety precautions with us. He said we need to sign some paperwork, stating that if we die, we won't sue the tour guide and his company. Oh great, I mean, that's just exactly what I need to hear right now. And my friends were so excited. 
They signed the paperwork quickly, and they couldn't wait. And one by one, they put on the helmet and walked down the staircase into the water at the back of the boat. And there I was, being scared out of my mind, holding my helmet, battling internally if I should just pretend I have a stomachache and not feeling well, and then just call it quit. My heart was pounding so fast. And then my last friend came over to check on me, and he said, "Hey, everyone is waiting for us in the water." Let's go. You'll be fine. I will go behind you. With his last little nudge, I decided to go for it. I slowly moved towards the end of the boat and bravely put on my helmet. And the tour guide indicated to me that I should take the staircase and go into the water. My heart was pounding even faster, and my face was turning a little red from the heat. And I thought I was going to faint. With each step down the staircase, I said a little prayer. At the very last step of the staircase, I said to myself, "Millie, you can do it. Millie, you can do it." With that, I took a deep breath and I went for it. Then there I was, into the water. I was so scared and was breathing like five times faster than I normally would. Do you know that feeling? I had to tell myself to stay calm, and quickly I saw my friends who were already in the water. Guess what I saw? My friends were feeding the fishes with the food the tour guide gave them. There were all kinds of cute little colorful fishes under the water, and there were some coral reefs too. My friends were busy taking photos with the fishes using their GoPros and underwater cameras. And some of them were waving here and there, pointing with their fingers, trying to talk to each other with the hand signal. Everyone was having a great time. Then. At the corner of my eye, I noticed that my last friend has come down from the boat, and he waved at me. Then I calmed down. Yay! I'm still alive. My breathing gradually went back to normal speed, and some little colorful fishes swam in front of me. I tried to touch them with my fingers, <laughs> and they were not afraid. They stayed there and let me touch them. So cool. I followed what my friends did and started feeding the fishes with the food the tour guide gave me. And my friends started snapping photos for me as I fed the fishes. It was so much fun. We tried to make silly posts, and we took a bunch of photos in the water. Time went by quickly, and before long, it's time for us to get back up on the boat. With a little disappointment, I walked towards the staircase and climbed back up onto the boat. As I got back on the boat and took off my helmet, I felt relieved. I didn't die from drowning or embarrass myself by fainting, and I actually have fun. I discover a whole new experience that I never imagined I would, and it turned out to be super cool and fun. And more importantly, I was proud of myself. I pushed through my fear. I did it, and it turned out to be less scary than I thought it would be. How about you? Do you have fear sometimes too? You are not alone, and like I said, I had many fears myself too. The fear of starting my own business, the fear of publishing a book, the fear of public speaking. But over time, I gradually overcome all these fears and achieve my dreams: building a seven-figure business, becoming a best-selling author, and becoming an international speaker, speaking in front of thousands or even in front of twenty-four thousand people in a stadium. You see, everyone has fears, and having fears does not mean that you are a coward. The key, however, is to conquer those fears and don't let them rule us, because fears can paralyze our actions and steal our dreams. Too many of us are not living our dreams because we are living our fears. So below, I want to share with you four tips to help you overcome your fears and live your dreams. Tip number one: Visualize yourself as unafraid. By visualizing yourself performing with confidence and competence in an area where you're most fearful of, you are changing your self-identity in your subconscious mind. Because your mind influences your feelings, and your feelings influences your actions. When you start to visualize yourself conquering your fears and achieving your dreams, you start to feel more calm and more confident in overcoming those fears. Tip number two: Yes, a little peer pressure can help. Like in my story, a big part of me going into the water was because of peer pressure. Sometimes a little peer pressure can really go a long way. Afraid to do your Facebook Live? Declare to your friends that you'll be doing a 21-day Facebook Live challenge. We don't want to lose face, right? 
So sometimes the peer pressure and accountability can help us to move forward despite the discomfort and fears. Now, tip number three: cheer for yourself. So this is a little trick I always do, and it has worked wonders for me. Before I do something that I'm afraid of, I always say to myself, "Millie, you can do it. Millie, you can do it." And almost a hundred percent of the time, talking and cheering for myself helps me to calm down and give me confidence. So next time when you need to overcome your fear, say your own name and tell yourself you can do it. Give that a try next time and see if this little trick also works for you. Last but not least, tip number four: do it afraid. Sometimes fears won't go away, and so you just have to do it afraid. As Joyce Meyer, number one New York Times best-selling author, says, "Fear can steal anything if you let it. The only way to live free from fear is to confront it and do it afraid." Realizing that every time you face your fears and do it afraid, it will lead you to new discoveries. Whether it's discovering a new hobby, a new opportunity, a new relationship, a new beginning, or even a new you, you enrich your life when you do it afraid. So, what are your fears? What are those little voices that are stopping you from achieving your dreams? Perhaps it's starting your own business, launching your podcast, starting your YouTube channel. Publishing your first book, creating your first online course, confront your fear and do them afraid, my dear. Your new beginning is on the other side of your fears, and it's time for you to shine and impact the world. I hope this episode has added value to you, and I look forward to seeing you in our next episode. Bye for now. Thank you for joining me today, and I'm so honored to have you here. If you'd like to know more about my free resources, online courses, and mentorship program, be sure to come visit me at my website, www.milliliang.com. That is M I L L I E L E U N G dot com. If you loved this episode, and I hope that you did, please subscribe to our podcast and share this with your friends too. New episodes are being released every week. Sending you love and lights. Keep shining and keep impacting the world. See you at our next episode. Bye for now.